series continues tonight with the story of an Apollo astronaut who felt the tremendous rush as NASA shot for the moon, then watched as the agency lowered its sights again and again in the years since. Bill Anders, the first man to orbit the moon and quite literally change the way we see ourselves and our planet. Anders has retired to San Juan Island. It's a couple of minutes flight in one of his vintage fighter planes from the Canadian border. Global BC's Ted Chernecki caught up with him at a nearby airfield. Let's keep the birds out of the engine. He has flown just about everything, and at age 70, Bill Anders still flies. This P-51 Mustang gets him around to air shows in Canada and the Pacific Northwest. But 35 years ago, he was on to much bigger things. I was out on my deck, and the moon was just a tiny sliver, which is exactly was when I went. And so I thought, yeah, that, I did go, and it, it's a long way. We have liftoff. December 21st, 1968. Right at the top of that rocket rides Bill Anders with Jim Lovell and Frank Borman, the first humans to ride the mighty Saturn V rocket. But Apollo 8 was never supposed to go to the moon. The CIA were picking up vibes that the Soviet Union was going to send a manned flight just around the moon, one big loop. So about three months before Apollo 8 was scheduled to go, NASA made, management made a brave decision and uh, reoriented the flight out of Earth orbit to go around the moon and into lunar orbit, which is a really big step. Apollo 8 suddenly became the most daring mission to date. Anders and crew were now destined to become the first humans to see the moon close up. Uh, the color of the moon looks uh, a very whitish gray, like uh, dirty beach sand. And then there was that dramatic photo he snapped of the Earth rising over the moon. We rotated the spacecraft looking forward, heads up, like you would be driving a car. And uh, shortly thereafter, we all saw this uh, gorgeous globe leaping up over the uh, lunar horizon. And it was a, a pretty momentous, you know, I guess, emotional event. Apollo 8 splashed down into the history books, an unparalleled success. Anders, on the right of your screen here, would go on to become the CEO of General Dynamics, retiring to the San Juan Islands, just south of Vancouver. And about the two shuttle disasters, this from a man who knows NASA. Infrastructure and bureaucracy is as big as it ever was, and so I think that's one of the reasons we're having trouble right now. Got a space station that can hardly keep the janitors supported up there. Got a shuttle that's coming apart now and then. Um, so it, it's, we got to kind of, I think, ratchet our expectation down to match the funding capability. Unlike the moonshot, science, not politics, will fuel the mission to Mars. And that'll take time and lots of money. In Vancouver, this is Global's Ted Chernecki reporting.